Although it varies between countries, on average about 75% of what we eat comes from just 12 plant species grown in farms just like this one. It's amazing how many different things we can produce from a small selection of crops. For instance, the wheat you see here will be used to make bread, biscuits and cereals. Other crops have industrial uses, such as the cotton used to make clothes or the various plants used to make biofuel. And there are still more crops grown to feed animals, provide natural medicines or decorate our homes and gardens. The human population is booming and every day there is more demand for the crops we need to maintain a healthy lifestyle. To keep up with demand, farmers need to find ways to produce more crops with the limited space that they have. In other words, crop yield needs to increase around the world. This video will summarize the different factors that influence crop yield. Many of these factors are dependent on each other, so we need to understand all of them to understand how to improve yield. Let's start with the effects of climate on crop growth. Climate refers to long-term weather patterns across a wide area. It determines the average temperature and rainfall in that area. These are both factors that affect crops. Every plant species has a certain range of temperatures it can cope with. Different species can tolerate different temperatures and perhaps a wider range of temperatures. Some grow better in warm conditions, some in cool conditions. Crops that prefer the heat include rice, coffee, tea and tropical fruits such as mango and pineapple. Crops that do well in cool climates include kale, carrots, broccoli, spinach and a range of other nutritious veggies. Every plant species also requires a certain amount of water for optimal growth. This is why rainfall is also a major influence on the growth of crops. As a general rule, crops that prefer a warm climate require more water than those that prefer a cool climate. This is why dense rainforests are only found near the equator. This is where the temperature is warm enough and the rainfall is high enough for them to develop. Climate is closely linked to the concept of growing season. For a given crop, the growing season indicates the number of consecutive days when the conditions are right for that crop to grow. The shorter the growing season, the more quickly the crop can be grown and harvested. For example, some crops with long growing seasons can only be harvested once a year. They include cotton, coffee, garlic, onions and watermelons. Some of them have the advantage that they can be stored for a long period of time before they have to be used. Other crops have short growing seasons and can be harvested multiple times per year. They include oats, lettuce, cucumbers and radishes. Crops with a long growing season tend to grow better near the equator where the temperature and rainfall are decently high all year round. Crops with a short growing season can be grown at higher latitudes because they can be sown, grown and harvested in between periods of frost. Next, the quality of soil also influences the yield of crops that grow in it. Soil is made up of four major components. Air, water, minerals and organic matter that comes from the breakdown of dead plants, animals, fungi and bacteria. The exact balance between these components should be monitored because once again, different crops can tolerate different conditions. Some grow best in water-rich soils, while others grow best in mineral-rich soils that don't contain too much water. Farmers need to be aware of the soil conditions their crops are best suited to and do their best to provide soil that meets their needs. Really good quality soil needs some extra things. First of all, it requires burrowing invertebrates such as worms to dig through the soil and create tiny passages for water and oxygen to flow along. This helps water and oxygen to reach the roots of crops. Decomposers, such as fungi and bacteria, are also needed to break down dead matter and add to the vital organic component of soil. This organic matter provides crops with some of the nutrients they need to grow, including carbon and nitrogen. Some nutrients are provided by the minerals in soil, and they include phosphorus and potassium. There's a lot going on inside soil, and all of it can affect how well crops grow within it. The last major influencer on crop yield is topography. This describes the shape of the land and the specific landforms that are found in an area. Some key features of topography include altitude, gradient and aspect. Let's quickly look at each of these features in turn. Altitude is the height of a point above sea level. For instance, the top of a mountain has a higher altitude than its foothills. 
the temperature tends to drop as altitude increases. In other words, the higher up you go, the colder it gets. Since different crops are suited for different temperature ranges, they grow best at different altitudes. Gradient refers to the slope of a surface. A surface with a high gradient is very steep, whereas a surface with a low gradient is gentle or flat. High gradient slopes are generally more difficult to grow crops on because they are eroded back by streams, rain, water or even just the pull of gravity. Low gradient slopes are often more stable and make for better places to grow large fields of crops. Finally, aspect is the direction a slope faces. All plants need sunlight to grow, so they tend to grow best on surfaces that face towards the sun. On slopes that face away from the sun, different plants may be grown that prefer shaded areas. All of these influences, climate, growing season, soil quality and topography, need to be taken into account when we try to increase crop yields. Clearly, this is a complex problem. The pressure to feed a ballooning population is mounting, but with our knowledge of crops and crop yield, we can find solutions. Thank you very much for watching.